riding along for an RC pilot's first time flying full scale. You say I have control. I have control. That's how we transfer back and forth, okay? And contrasting it against my first RC flying lesson, which didn't go as well. <laughs> There's an old saying in radio control flying that you never have a crash you can't walk away from. We crossed Canada last summer with the Flight Chops crew and got from the West Coast to the East Coast to meet all sorts of awesome aviators. This one is from our adventure on Prince Edward Island. I'm here visiting lifelong aviation enthusiast Big Jim from Great Hobbies. There are three full-scale airplanes in the Great Hobbies hangar. We'll fly them in a future episode. Jim spent most of his life flying RC before getting into the cockpit. Oh, I didn't really uh, get into full-scale flying until about, about 10 years ago. It'll be 10 years next month that I actually started. I had been sort of considering doing gliding at one point and was thinking maybe I'll go to the uh, soaring club, but then I kept thinking maybe I'll go out and take an introductory flight. So I, I took my daughter, went out for a first introductory flight in a 172 at the fl uh, flight school here. I loved it. I said, okay, I'm going to continue with that. But his love of flying runs much deeper than that. It all started with models. This was my grandfather's property and I would be here when I was a young fellow. I'd come over every weekend to stay with them for a night or so and uh, you'd hear model airplanes flying uh, about a kilometer and a half from here. My grandfather took me over and I eventually tried a radio control model and uh, uh, it still exists. <laughs> it's, it's been in the uh, attic. I've been told that it's too nostalgic to throw out the first radio control system was a, a very simple five-channel Heathkit radio control system that we had to put together right from scratch. And that was back, as I say, when I was about 12, 13 years old when I started that. We decided to try an experiment. Take a, a model pilot and see what how he could do in a, a full-scale aircraft. Enter Giles. Giles is a, a, a young man that works with us at Great Hobbies in Charlottetown. Loves quads particularly and FPV, that's his sort of his specialty, but he flies the aircraft as well. I'm an RC plane enthusiast and this is my first time flying something full scale like this, so we're going to see how that goes. I assume that the controls are going to be somewhat reminiscent of what I'm used to in RC. This is basically ultimate first person view. After a quick pre-flight briefing. So this all the way back is, is idle. idle. Okay. Giles had us taxiing to the runway as gracefully as he could. And victory now is rolling to one. Having completed run-up and pre-takeoff checks, Big Jim took control as there was a pretty strong crosswind. And just like that, we were climbing out to see what Giles was made of. But we'll get back to that in a minute, as this was only half of the experiment. We took you, Steve, as a full-scale pilot and put you on the controls of the model, and we uh, we wanted to see just how they would compare in trying to marry the radio control and the full scale. This is Big Jim's sidekick, Little Jim. He's here along with Giles to put me to the test. Dual controls, just like the real thing. I flew RC for a lot of years before I took an interest in full size. I think it helped me a lot. Little Jim is also a full scale pilot, but I have no RC experience probably easier for a model pilot to fly a full scale than it is for a full scale pilot to fly a model. The size alone makes quite a difference. It's much easier to control something that's larger. The other thing, of course, is the perspective. You're flying a model, if it's coming towards you, all of a sudden things are backwards. Okay, let's, uh, right. let's fly some RC. Well, it's just like the full size. Basically, the control function the same way. We're going to use two radios today. You're going to get what we call a buddy box. So if you lose control, I'm just going to let go of a switch, and then I have control again. You're going to use my radio. So do you want to do the takeoff? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Is it, is it cocky for me to try to take off? No. It's going to be just like taking off a Cessna. Give me the, the, how does this work? So this is just like your stick in the Cub. You've got uh, aileron left and right. Yeah. Elevator forward, elevator back, just okay. like in the yeah. Cub. Yeah. Rudder over here. Okay. And forward and back is throttle. So, so this all makes sense except for the rudder and the throttle being coupled. Yeah. Yeah, you're not using your feet today. It just depends right, how the roll starts. On take. Well, wait, wait, I'm going to do a takeoff, right? You want to taxi it? <laughs> well, I guess. Oh, of course. All right, all go right. ahead. Okay, all right, so I'm just going to taxi in a little circle here. So It's going to be weird taking off toward myself. That's, that's a bit of the challenge of radio control. I'm going to crash immediately when I try to do a correction and have it coming toward me. Oh, bug in my forehead. What? It's going to be up here. Sorry, sorry. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> that was a mosquito. I'm no blaming problem. that on a mosquito. No I problem. Thought. Clearly, my side of the experiment isn't faring too well. 
Let's check back in with Giles as he takes control of a full-scale aircraft for the first time. Here's great hobbies. It is indeed. Okay, we're getting up close there now. We're at 2350. I'm going to have you take control. All right. You take control. You say you have. You say I have control. I have control. That's how we transfer back and forth. Okay. And now you can just feel. And you can tell if you're going up or down. Yeah, that's very direct. Yeah, it is indeed. So whenever you let off, it's going to default to what the trim is set to. It should. It should pretty close. Yes. Yeah. So if I want to do a turn, it's kind of coordinated rudder and aileron, and you can. Uh, and you can see there now. See where the ball is. The ball. Is it the ball in that co turn coordinator down there? Yeah. Okay. What's it saying? It's uh, just slightly over that line to the right. Okay. So what you do is you add just a little bit of pressure to the right. That means you step on the ball. So step with your right foot, the rudder, just and try flying with one hand because really you only ever need one hand. The other hand is for the throttle and the radio and so on. So you really should really fly with your okay. Left hand. Actually, you'd want to fly with your left hand because yep. your throttle right. is your right. Okay, so we're turning, but that is in the clear. So this basically just tells you how to use your rudder. Exactly. Cool. Yep. I was expecting it to be more mushy and less like direct control, but it's really direct. Yes. With Giles picking up the controls so quickly, one could say the experiment was already over. Great. Because clearly, I'm struggling. Okay, you have control. Okay. So you can taxi. Get a feel for how it's backwards. A little trick when you're on the ground, push the, the rudder to the direction it's going, and that will make it go direction. the other direction. So it's, it's veering this way, so push left rudder, and that will correct when it's coming I'm trying, you. but that wasn't really doing it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're going to get it? Okay. Yeah, Giles will get it. This is not going well so far. Yeah, help us out. There we go. It's a little left, a little left, a little left. I'm going all left. Yeah, keep the roll going. Power up with left rudder and rotate. There you go. Part of the biggest challenge when you learn to fly radio control is just the pilot's perspective is no longer in the airplane, so. I'll get her back over the runway here. When you're directly overhead, you tend to uh, either push it into the ground or, or pull it up. No, it's doing weird stuff. That wasn't me. Did that you wasn't see, you? Did you see that wing wag? Might have got a little gust. Might have got a little turbulence out there. At this distance, it starts to get hard to tell which wing is down or up. Eh? It does, yeah. You kind of have to remember what you were doing in some ways. Is there a bank limitation on this thing? It doesn't seem like I can overbank it. You have him in intermediate mode, do it, don't you? Yeah, it's not letting me uh, bank as steep as I thought. I felt like I needed to fully deflect the controls in order to hold it in a turn, which is not the case in normal airplanes, so this threw me off a little bit. Well, I, I got to be honest with you, Steve. We have it in a bit of a flight assist mode. So here, let's click you into expert mode. So now, you've got full authority, you can roll it right over if you choose. 45 degrees is more than enough. Right, I'll do a little pass here. So now it was feeling more like a real airplane. Most pilots, when they're beginning, get really messed up with it coming back towards them. But the problem was I'd learned it five minutes ago and it felt like a video game. Once you get flying for quite a while, you know what it took to get into the turn yourself. You're starting to really control and fly the aircraft. So that's just something you grow into. That's part of the, the learning process. Well, why don't we set up for a landing approach? So just like in full scale, set up a nice uh, stable approach and just slowly reduce power to set your glide, eh? your glide. <laughs> not Grass. too bad, not too bad. To do a landing on your first time out, that's, uh, that's pretty good. With one landing stuck in the grass, I'm not entirely unhappy with how I'm progressing. Giles is doing really well though. So how much of this translates from your RC experience? The actual way that you interact with the airplane is completely different, but what you're telling the airplane to do is pretty similar. Another beautiful day over Prince Edward Island. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yep. That earlier cloud disappeared. Now let's try a 360 degree turn. So a left turn? Yeah, we'll do a left turn. We always look, make sure there's no other airplane. Yeah, so look over your shoulder, just make sure there's no other aircraft there. Yeah, where's the signal light? Hey, yeah. I'm checking my blind spot, I feel like I should signal. Changing lights here. But you still check your blind spot even in planes, because you never know. That's yeah, you never doing. know. Yeah, the rudder is we actually keep going right to the full 360, so. I keep going, yeah. Yeah, the rudder is mostly for during aileron input. Once you're, once you're established in your turn, you don't need the you rudder. You don't need to touch it. Yeah. I just did a good job holding altitude. Yeah, very good indeed. Try it. Excellent. 
And now that my training wheels are off, Little Jim is gonna make it even harder for me. I'm actually gonna switch receivers so okay. that it has no control at all and it's just a standard, nothing to it, so. Yeah, that's fun though. So oh just God. to be clear, I have no help here. If you have I have no help, it's all you. If you continue God. to hold on this, it's going to roll over. Yeah. That's what I was noticing before. Oh, that's cocky. Oh, that didn't sound good. I got it. God help me. I am going to crash this thing probably, right? Uh, no, not necessarily. So you did, you did good with the first flight, so. Power up. Okay, yeah. It's more, uh, more touchy also. It's way more touchy. We're never going to find it if I crashed out there. Level up. Level up. Oh, <laughs> Is it like gone? Not too bad? Not too bad. Flyable? Oh yeah. Look at all the crap. <laughs> all the crap. <laughs> Well, I think the, the mistake you made is a very common one for new, new RC pilots is that you held the aileron input in until it was rolled right over. And do you guys stock extra elastics with you so when this kind of thing happens? <laughs> There's an old saying in radio control flying that you never have a crash you can't walk away from. So. Okay, so kind of back to where we were. If I, take, if I need to, I can take control. Okay, so I'm so. gonna try to take off right from there? Yep, you have control. And who knows how it's gonna fly after that horrible wing spar bend? Yeah, fine. Yeah, you'll find it. Jesus, H Christ. Who's got it? Am I still, am I, I have that? control. Yeah, Sorry, you have I control. Was, I, couldn't I almost killed Chris. But think of things, set your throttle about half. Half. Controls okay. are neutral. You have control again. No, I don't. What am I doing? Okay. Uh, I know what's going on. Jim realized we forgot to pre-flight the plane when re-rigging it, and the ailerons are reversed. The control's backwards. Did we do a pre-flight? So just like in full scale, pre-flighting is very important. Okay. Do you want to get in there, Giles, and switch that? So thank yeah, you. make sure you have control, Jim. Uh, oh, I have, yeah. You've reversed okay. ailerons. Okay. Well, that was fun, flying with reverse ailerons. You found that it's a little bit difficult. <laughs> And that's why I almost killed Chris, right? Because it made a turn in the opposite direction. Yeah, and then more, the more you tried to correct, the more it went. Yeah. There you go. You just be gentle on the control. Oh, I'm trying, Small dude. Movement. Should I be at full power or? No, you can throttle back a little bit. Actually, it just keeps us from having to walk as far to go get what's left. <laughs> and I have control. Oh, it's so close. You got it? Yeah, mainly because the, the low voltage cutoff's kicking in. Nicely done. Well, no, I mean, for that. Soon. <laughs> Good job. All right, well, let's, let's pull out the Super Cup. Now, just like skating, there's good to bad side. So now we're going to try to the right, do the exact same thing to the right. Okay. Okay. I got your traffic scan. What do we see over here? Anything behind us on this side? Nope. Okay. Very nicely. We, we're a little bit of a climb, even though that's saying zero. We, we've climbed up a bit, so. Yeah. Are you want to demonstrate a steep turn, Jim? Sure. Okay. I feel it. Yeah, you'll feel it. Okay. So we'll do a, a fairly steep turn to the left here. We check over our shoulder. Now it's going to take a fair bit more pull. Yeah. Oh yeah, close. It's even showing a stall warning coming out there. We were on such oh, a yeah. steep turn, right? Yeah. We weren't really that close to the stall, but just the way the, the, the wind, the way the temperature works. Yeah. That's right. And this is a flight test maneuver, standard training. So it requires a little more work to maintain your altitude and make your turn nice and accurate. Okay, we'll let you take control again. You have control. I have control. So let's try some slower flight. We'll uh, maybe bring it down to Oh, 75 miles per hour or so. Yeah, so we'll we'll pull that back to maybe 2,000 RPM, let's say. But we're going to maintain altitude, okay? Going 90 miles per hour. And I, th I would say we're almost holding altitude, might slightly down. Almost, yeah. So let's, uh, let's just do a turn at this speed here. We're flying at about 85 miles per hour. Now you'll notice things are a lot mushier. Yes. Not as much wind to play with. Controls are less sensitive. Yeah. Or we're descending a little bit. You're doing extremely well. Thank you. Okay, I'll take control now, and yep. uh, we've started a descent here, so we're fairly high. We'll get into a descent mode. 
This will be a little bit of a challenging one, eh? It will. Indeed. What we got gusting 15? Yep. About 45 degrees off. Oh, uh, 70 degrees off. Is it fairly common to have uh, a bounce landing and have to try and get so you got time to take it to the end? Take it to the end. Quick three now. Sorry? What? Is it fairly common to have a bounce landing and have to try again? Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, let's go stare out for the uh, front final here just so Jim can concentrate. We're going to land it long. Charlottetown Radio Rouge 1706 on the handoff from Moncton. We're uh, descending through 6,000 feet. Commencing the approach over Ovapu in two minutes. Estimate landing at 5-7. I'm not ashamed to admit Giles did better with his side of the experiment. For somebody that had never flown before and just to see how well he did and uh, actually quite impressed at how well he did do. He wished he had the uh, transmitter in his hand. He, he could probably control the plane a lot better if he had a normal RC transmitter that was doing the work for him but uh, handled the yoke well. The last thing we did at the RC field was have Little Jim show me his beautiful Super Cub. This is familiar. Oh, I love it. It's got nav lights and everything. <laughs> and a beacon. That is awesome. I don't take it the wrong way, but I'm not going to let you fly this one. <laughs> I totally don't blame him. I felt like it got closer at the end, but it was very twitchy. I got spoiled by the, uh, what do you call it, the assist or whatever? Yes. Safe system. The safe, safe, safe system? system. Yeah. So when did that technology become a thing? Oh, it's the past two or three years. It's really caught on well. Yeah. I mean, it's great to start. Yeah. It really helps get the, uh, the beginner in the air safely. <laughs> Flying the Super Cub at dusk was reminiscent of the real thing. There's a link in the description to my full-scale Super Cub Zen dusk flight. Watch for more content coming from the East Coast shoot. We've already published all the stuff from the West Coast shoot last summer. And I've got some episodes coming with advanced aerobatics training in a Pitts S2B in Winnipeg. Thanks again to Patreon supporters and sponsors for making this channel possible. Please visit flightchops.com to play the monthly contest, join our mailing list, and check out the back catalog where it's now over 100 episodes. And keep your flight chops sharp. Oh my god. Oh, that's cocky. Oh my god. I can't.